Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to continue our talk about publishing and subscribing by making some of our resolutions private. Now, you'll give users the option whether they want to choose to make these private, and if they become private, only the user that has uh, created that resolution will have access to it, both on the front end or the back end. So that way you have that ad security, and they're not able to access the content uh, that you're not wanting your users to be able to access. So let's get into that right now. So let's get started by first adding our HTML. What we're essentially going to do here is have a, a uh, button that the user can press that sets whether this resolution is something that they want everybody to see or if it's just something uh, they want to have for themselves, right? So it's whether it's a public or private resolution. So to do that, what well, we want to go ahead and add a, uh, a new bracket. And this is going to be for a helper function that we're going to have. So it's going to be if, and then the function is going to be is owner. So if this person owns this content, then we're going to want to show them this button. So we can have a, a button and the class will just be toggle private, just like so. And inside of the button, we're also going to have some sort of an if statement, right? So we have double brackets and it's going to say if, uh, that's pound if, we're going to say private then you're going to want to display the words private. And likewise, if we want this to be public, we want it to say public. So we can do bracket bracket else and then public. Okay. And now we want to bracket bracket forward slash and the if, and then outside of the button, uh, bracket bracket forward slash and the if. So on the surface, uh, if you check out our app, nothing's going to change. I'm going to open up inspect element just because I like to have it open. And as you can see, we're not getting any errors. Nothing's happening. Just nothing's showing up. Simply because we're checking if this is owner. Is owner's not a thing. Therefore, it's just failing this entirely and skipping this code block. Let's go ahead and add that helper. So that helper was a resolutions helper. So we can come down here and say template dot resolution dot events. Okay, that's sort of what we want. What we don't have is template dot resolutions dot helpers. So let's go ahead and add that template dot resolution dot helpers with an S. Now that we can go and have a parentheses brackets, just like we've been doing. And inside of this object here, we're going to go ahead and have our, our new function which we used the is owner. So we want to say is owner. And like I said, this is an object. So we'll have colon and then it's going to be a function. And just like that. Now inside of this function, we just need to return essentially a true or false statement. What we want to do is we want to check whether the current user is equal to the person who owns the content. Now, what we never did is we never uh, attached an owner to any of the content before. So let's actually scroll down a little bit and where we added our uh, resolution. So we had our ad resolution in our media methods. We had the title, we had the created ad date. Let's go ahead and add a uh, part where we say owner. Okay. So now the owner is going to be equal to the current meteor dot user ID, just like that. Okay, so now when somebody creates a new uh, resolution, we're going to get that user's ID attached to this. So to actually uh, make this work now, we're going to delete these two. It's okay because it's really easy. Okay, we've added, uh, we've deleted those two, and we can go ahead and add our new resolutions. So uh, read more make tutorials. Okay. And to verify that the owner is uh, actually attached to this, we can actually just output that. So let's go ahead to our resolutions and just pretty much anywhere. I'm just going to go ahead and say um, owner, just like that. 
And as you can see, we have these IDs, therefore that these two pieces of content are getting the owner ID correctly. Okay, so we have the owner is in there. Now we need to finish our is owner function. Let's scroll back up to our helper function and here we wanna go ahead and check whether or not the owner of this particular resolution is equal to the current user. Now, down here, we had the current user just by simply saying meteor.userID. Let's scroll back up and then we can say this, referring to the current resolution dot owner is equal to, and then we can say meteor user ID, and we're gonna run a return the outcome of this. So we're gonna return if this owner is equal to the current user, then give them the option to have this button. Let's come back to our site, and you can see we have this public button here. Now, what happens if we log out? Uh, you can see those buttons go away simply because the current user is not, uh, is not an owner, right? Okay, so let's sign back in, and here we have our public button. Now we wanna bring this button up so it actually does something. So this isn't gonna to be too hard. We just need a template.resolution.event like we have this click toggle checked. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just add a new one at the end here and delete that colon or that comma because it's the last one. And the class we had on this was toggle private. So once you click toggle private, it's going to go ahead and call a Meteor method here. So let's actually keep this stuff here and modify it. So the method we're going to write, uh, like we had update resolution, can just be set private because all we're gonna be doing is setting whether this content was private or not. Uh, it's a toggle, right? So we're not actually gonna be doing a whole lot of updating. We're just going to be setting whether this is private. So we're gonna also pass in this underscore ID because we want to affect a certain piece of content. And we're gonna do the same thing where we had the exclamation point this checked. However, we're gonna give the result of this dot private, the opposite, right? It's going to toggle. Uh, so if it was true before, it's going to be false. If it's false, then it's going to be true. Okay, so we have this dot private. Uh, the inverse is getting set to uh, set private. So let's go ahead and write that set private method now. Down here, we can just go ahead and add a new method, set private, I'm going to spell it correctly, private. Now it's going to be colon function. Now, if you remember, this function was passed an ID. It was also passed whether or not this was going to be uh, becoming private. And we can give this as a variable simply like private, just like that. Now we'll have a bracket. And inside of here, uh, this is where we're going to be updating our our resolution, right? So before we wanted to update a resolution, we just use update dot or resolution dot update. Now what we want to do here is something a little bit different. Uh, we don't want to give anybody the access to do this. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of the code that was running before is just sort of front end protection stuff. However, back here with our meteor methods, this is really where we protect ourselves from somebody being able to run a command and somebody being able to update your resolutions without you wanting them. So we need to set in some a bit more protection here. So we can add uh, a new variable and it's just going to be res, it's just short for resolution to keep it, keep it short right now. And we could say uh, var res is equal to, and now we're going to find a resolution. But we're just gonna find one and it's gonna be based off of the ID. So we can say dot find one. Now find one is a, a MongoDB method that's essentially going to just find one resolutions uh, from our collection. And all we have to do is pass this the ID so we can just say ID. And that's going to find us a single resolution and set it to res. Okay, so now let's do uh, a little bit of checking here. So we're gonna say if, and we can say res.owner is not equal to the current meteor dot user ID. So this is the same check we were really doing before, uh, just res dot owner because we're finding the resolution here instead of via this. If res dot owner is not equal to the meteor ID, then we're gonna throw an error. 
So to do that, we just need to say throw new meteor dot error. And this is going to be a not authorized in a string. Uh, so that's what's going to get passed. If you try to do this, uh, you'll notice you'll get a, uh, if you try to do this and you're not the owner of the content, for some reason you were able to get those buttons to show up, then the site's actually not going to allow you to update this and it's going to throw an error. And that error is gonna prevent you from being able to update this uh, resolution. So now we can do our resolutions update. So let's go ahead and, and copy this whole resolutions update line from right here, paste it in down here. And so we're gonna be updating resolutions passing it the ID, and now instead of set checked to checked, we're gonna set private to uh, the variable private that we brought in, this argument here, just like that. So now this set private method is going to be working. If we come back to our page here, uh, we click public, you almost were actually getting this error. So we had this error invoking set private method so that's what happens when uh, uh, this um, is going to get tripped. And actually the reason it got tripped was because of a typo. Uh, user ID is actually a method of Meteor. So what we need to do is have uh, two parentheses like that afterwards. So that was the problem, but you'll notice that that's what happens when you throw the error message. Uh, basically, uh, public never becomes private and we get a little uh, console log error on our front end. Okay, now with all that said, uh, we have user ID method in there correctly. Let's go ahead and select this button. You notice the text is already changing to private, so make tutorials is now going to be a private resolution. Okay, so one last thing. We don't want Meteor to publish the private resolutions. Uh, there's a difference in Meteor between front end and back end, and a lot of times when you have this publish subscribe, uh, you get to restrict access. Without restricting access, uh, you get access to everything, and that's not really what we want. So now there's just a couple more steps to finish this out. We basically need to control what we're publishing, and then we need to go ahead and modify the rest of our methods to check the current user state. So keep watching. We're going to show you all that in the next video. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at uh, Level Up Tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.